What's going on guys, Briar Rabbit here, and it's been a bit, been a bit since I made a YouTube video, and uh, I gotta say it's kind of fun, it's good to be back here, uh, let's see if the trend continues, uh, a lot of you know that I've been doing a lot more streaming and a lot less YouTube lately, and there's a couple of reasons for that, one is that obviously, uh, you know, I've been dissatisfied with the way that YouTube has treated creators for a long time, uh, and Twitch, I feel, treats their creators a lot better, and it's just a, it's a more friendly platform to be on, frankly. Uh, but the other, the other is that I've been somewhat disillusioned with Bungie and Destiny 2 uh, over the last, let's say, five months, four or five months or so, and making Destiny 2 videos... It just wasn't rocking my boat like it used to. Um, it's funny, is I enjoy playing Destiny 2, but I was mad at Bungie. I was mad at Bungie for a lot of different reasons. I was, I was really upset with the way that they designed the Eververse Trading Company and that they really made that a focus of Destiny 2. For instance, so many of the rewards that used to be locked away behind, let's say, raids or certain challenges in Destiny 1 got locked behind Eververse. And in a loot-based shooter, I was really upset that 50% of the loot was in microtransactions. That really upset me. Um, so a lot of people have problems with the sandbox and with the content and with this and that. That stuff to me is for the most part fixable. The stuff that really got under my skin was what I saw as predatory behavior uh, with microtransactions and loot boxes and the way the game just always seems steered toward bringing you to the Eververse, whether that's with showing off everybody's emotes at the beginning of every Trials match, or with the dawning just being absolutely centered around microtransactions and it being very difficult, if possible at all, to earn any of that cool dawning gear by playing the game. You really just had to buy stuff, uh, which I thought was really shitty. Uh, but now, I'll be honest with you, over the last three to four weeks, with the Iron Banner, with the way that Bungie's been communicating very openly on their blog, and with the details being released yesterday of the Crimson Days event, I got a lot of hope in the future. I feel like Bungie has really responded to community feedback and criticism in a great way. So specifically what I'm talking about is the Iron Banner I felt like was a great event. Now. You have to separate this conversation from how you feel about the meta of Destiny or the sandbox and what needs to change about gunplay or grenades or guns or any of that stuff. What I'm saying is that the actual event, the pieces of the event where gear was awarded and the way you earned loot and the way challenges were doled out for ornaments, I thought was really brilliant. It really did, it put an emphasis on playing the game as opposed to loot boxes. And I think that the changes they've made to Iron Banner and that are coming, uh, I'm sure, for the, for the faction rallies are actually really nice changes to the game and really incentivize playing the game. Yes, I do think that we need better guns, we need more rewarding guns uh, for these events, for, for the Iron Banner and for the faction rally. Because of the fact that we've lost random rolls in Destiny 2, they just need to produce more guns faster. We just need, guns are exciting. Getting new guns is exciting and they need to make that a thing. They need to produce new weaponry faster in Destiny 2 so that every time we get into a new Iron Banner or a Faction Rally or the Dawning event or the Crimson Days event, there's new guns. There's constantly new guns to try out and test and hopefully find new favorites. But back to the point of the video, I do feel like the Iron Banner event, the way it was run, the way it was structured, the way that uh, you had to spe specifically do certain things to get the ornaments, and the fact that your progress toward those challenges for ornaments would move forward to the next Iron Banner, I think that was all brilliant. It really incentivized uh, me playing the game, and I saw that with a lot of other people too. People who don't necessarily enjoy the Crucible in the current meta were playing Iron Banner because they wanted those rewards and they wanted to earn those rewards. So hopefully in the future when they change the sandbox, hopefully that's a massive change, hopefully it's a really good change, and hopefully it adds a lot of fun to PvP, so in the future Iron Banner will be even more fun. You'll get fun gameplay plus fun rewards, kind of combo those up and we're really talking. now. 
Also, yesterday, details about the Crimson Days event were released, and this was a big deal to me. Uh, because the dawning event was so shitty, it was so shitty, so shitty. <laughs> The Crimson Days event seems to have learned a lot from our criticisms of the dawning event. Uh, and there is a lot less emphasis on the Eververse Trading Company. In fact, all of the rewards they showed yesterday are earnable in-game and can't be bought. That's huge. That's a big change for Destiny 2 compared to how this game shipped and how they expected us to interact with the Eververse Trading Company. So in Crimson Days, we're getting obviously a new map, we're getting a new 2v2 game mode, but we're also getting rewards, mostly cosmetic, in Destiny 2 that were previously completely locked behind the Eververse. If you compare uh, where, these, uh, where these rewards are coming from in Crimson Days to the Dawning event, you're going to see that all of these rewards were available in the Dawning, or similar rewards were available in the Dawning, but they're all locked behind Eververse. In the Crimson Days event, all this stuff is going to be earnable by play. And these are things that were previously only available in Eververse. Things like an exotic sparrow, an exotic uh, emote. You know, these things were just previously only available through Eververse. And I think that's really cool. They're really emphasizing earning rewards as opposed to buying them. And I think that is a truly positive change for Destiny 2. And it makes me much more of a fan of Bungie. It it was hard to be a fan of Bungie when I felt like they were preying upon us, where every decision that I looked at in Destiny 2 seemed to be just, it, it was like there was just these big, red, blinking, Las Vegas-style arrows pointing at the Eververse Trading Company everywhere you went. It doesn't matter if you're doing something like The Dawning or if you're doing Trials of Osiris. It, it was just constantly pointing you at the damn Eververse Trading Company. I feel like Bungie is pulling it back. They're taking a step back. They pulled back the reins on the Eververse Trading Company. They've heard our complaints, and they've heard how much we dislike it, and they're starting to add rewards to in-game play, whether that be a ghost for doing the raid, whether it be exotic sparrow and exotic emotes for doing the Crimson Days event. What we're seeing is is Bungie turning away from the Eververse. The Eververse is gonna be there, it's gonna stay. There's no way they're getting rid of that thing, right? But what they are adding are alternate paths to get cool stuff. You don't have to interact with Eververse Trading Company to get all the coolest cosmetic stuff in the game. The way it was in Destiny 1 is when you when you did raids over and over again, you got cool stuff you got an you got a cool sparrow one of the best sparrows in the game came from vault of glass you got a ship they took all of that stuff out in destiny 2 and put it behind the eververse trading company they heard our complaints now and they've started to add it back in to end game rewards for doing nightfalls for doing strikes for doing raids for compete competing in seasonal events they're really turning that around and i gotta i gotta commend bungie because they are clearly listening to the community and that's reflected in the way they've been communicating with us over the last, let's say, three to four weeks or so. They've really changed the way they've communicated with the community, especially in the TWAB, but even in between different blog posts. Like yesterday's Crimson Days event, they put a bunch of information out there. They showed us all the rewards we can get, how we can get them, and how it's not tied to the Eververse Trading Company like it used to be. You don't have to buy microtransactions to get all the cool Crimson Days stuff. And then they were on Twitter clarifying this stuff is all earnable in-game and not purchasable. That was a big thing. The last few blogs, they've gone out there and they've told us about what's coming in Destiny 2 long-term. Really, long-term. Right When they put out a blog post that shows here's what's coming in March, here's what's coming out in May, they're putting their ass out on the line. When they promise something for May... That's a long time away, and something could go wrong between now and then that they can't provide one of those things that they listed, right? There's no doubt about it. So when they put their ass out on the line like that, I've got to commend them, right? Is, and if they do miss one of those goalposts, if they say they can't get one of those things to happen by May, as long as they're communicating about it, I'm going to give them a pass. I'm going to say, hey, you know, you, you, put your, you put yourself out there, 
you told us that this is the stuff we're working on. This is our target is May or March. And they missed that target. I got to tell I got to tell you like hey, you know, you're up front with us and I appreciate that. And I like the new way Bungie's communicating. I hope they stick with it though. I really hope they stick with it. If this is a temporary trend that we see from Bungie and they put out a sandbox update and it's amazing and everybody comes back to the game and everybody's happy and then they just clam up again, that's no good. That's no good because you're going to get in, back in the same position. Same position we've been in for the last six months. So hopefully hopefully this is a trend that's going to continue in the future, especially from the live team, the team that takes care of the game. You know, obviously I don't need to know all about the new story details for the next DLC or I don't need to see... You know what crucible maps are coming three months from now but i do want to know that what the sandbox team is working on and i do want to know that the community was heard that we didn't like the change to the titan's shoulder charge right and that kind of communication i thought was fantastic when they when they came out in the last bungie uh weekly update and they talked about the shoulder charge and they said look Here's why we changed the shoulder charge. We changed it because it was being used as a, a movement helper for guardians, where we didn't mean it to be that. We meant it to be just a way to damage other guardians or other enemies. The community was using it in a way we didn't intend. We put a stop to it, and then we heard from the community that that was a bad change because it, it lessened the fun of Destiny. We hear you. And in the future, we're going to try to do we're going to try to make less changes or fewer changes that lessen the fun of destiny because it's not how we intended you to play we're going to embrace how you play and develop around that as opposed to drawing back on what you have discovered as ways to play so the first thing they're going to do is re-lengthen the the distance the shoulder charge goes but i'm hoping that this mentality kind of spreads throughout, right? One of the things I was really mad about was that there was this there was this kind of cool meta game of doing public events where you could double dip or triple dip and kind of keep reloading into the same areas and trying to get back into the same public event. And you're just trying to get more chests and more XP that way. And it was really fun. Uh, I can definitely see that it wasn't intended by the developer, right? But it was fun. And how many times, if you are if you listen to the Destiny Community Podcast, how many times did we talk about double dipping, triple dipping on the podcast? Because we were having fun doing it. And when Miss 5000 Watts hit the, the elusive quad dip, it's, I mean, that was amazing. But they took it out. They, they kept us from doing something that we really enjoyed because, you know, it, it wasn't the way they intended, intended us to do public events. They need to get over that. When we're having fun doing something like double dipping or triple dipping, you got to let us do it. You got to let us have fun doing it because that's why we play video games is to have fun. And when we find an exploit like that, of course we're going to abuse it. And when it's a really fun exploit like that and we're talking about it for weeks on end in the Destiny Community Podcast, you got to realize, you got to realize this is fun. Don't take it out. So I'm really enthusiastic about the future of Destiny 2. I'll be honest with you. I was really upset with Bungie for for a couple of months there. Uh, but between what I saw from the Iron Banner, uh, the communication that we've seen from this week at Bungie blog posts, and from what I understand is going to happen in the Crimson Days event, of course, the Crimson Days event hasn't happened yet. So, you know, anything could happen. <laughs> anything could happen. But from what I understand is going to happen... In the Crimson Days event, I got to say, I'm really enthusiastic about the direction that the live team, Chris Barrett, how these guys are handling Destiny 2. I'm really looking forward to seeing the Sandbox update. I'm really looking forward to seeing what September is going to bring for Destiny. Because I think there's really two goalposts out there right now. Two things that I'm focusing on uh, long term for Destiny 2. A Sandbox update that adds more fun to the Crucible. I think it's sorely needed. I think that it needs to do two things. I think it, adds, it needs to add more fun to the Crucible, and I think that making our Guardians faster is definitely going to do that, but it also needs to impact PvE positively. If you look at who's playing this game, it's a huge proportion of people are playing PvE, and if you ruin their fun to make PvP more fun, I think that's a mistake. So anything you do to the Crucible or anything you do to the Sandbox... 
It has to take PVE, you know, into account, and it cannot be you cannot be ruining the fun of PVE players uh, to make the PvP game more fun. I do want the PvP game to be more fun. Don't don't get me wrong. I want it to be faster, more dynamic. I want more of those hero experiences. But be careful. <laughs> be careful. I am very enthusiastic, though. We got the sandbox update out there. We're looking that square in the eyes. If that is a successful update, if they can figure out how to make PvP more fun and bring some PvP players back to this game and get new p people playing this game because they see how fun PvP can be, that would be a huge success for Destiny 2. That's that's up in the air for me. I don't know if they're, they're going to be able to pull that back off with one sandbox update but I'm definitely hopeful for the future. And then in September, when we get you know some kind of uh, expansion for this game, which I fully expect, you know they haven't they haven't said anything about it, but I expect something in September uh, as an expansion. I think that's another uh, big moment for Destiny 2. If the game is fun to play because of the sandbox update they made in the spring, and they add a bunch of cool new content and a, and cool new ways to play Destiny 2 in the fall with an expansion. I think it could be a real turning event for Destiny 2, but you know, we'll have to see. What I am happy about is that I'm just not pissed off at Bungie anymore. <laughs> I was pissed, man. And uh, I feel like because of the communication, because of the way they're running events, because they're de-emphasizing the Eververse trading company, I really do feel like uh, they're turning a corner, and I'm really happy about that. So this is going to do it for this video. Let me know. Uh, it's been a long video. It's almost 17 minutes. I do thank you for uh, sticking with me, and thank you for uh, watching the video. Hit that like button if you like the video. Hit subscribe if you're new to the channel. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. I'll be streaming on Twitch this afternoon as well. Also playing a cool new game called Islands of the Nine. It's a new Battle Royale game. It's in alpha right now. It's a first-person shooter. It almost looks like... Call of Duty slash Crisis slash Battle Royale. It's a cool, cool game. So I'll be streaming some of that this afternoon as well as Destiny. So if you want to hang out, come by twitch.tv slash Briar Rabbit. And I'll see you guys there. Bye. Oh! oh, no, oh! <laughs> oh